welcome evening afternoon whatever time it is for you hi everybody welcome to archetype my name is josh herman welcome to the show today we're going to be uh, continuing the character that we had worked on last stream which was a new character uh, so if you can see in the description wherever that is for you uh, we're working on the magician today the magician is one of the 12 archetypes that carl jung created uh, and this is the fourth one in the series that we're working on uh, i'll quickly show you just some of that stuff in case you don't know what that is uh, this is archetype wheel we have so far done the caregiver the artist the sage and we are now coming all the way down here to this orange one the magician uh, i'm going to show you very shortly in a second uh where we're at with that stuff and it's just kind of uh, give you an update on how far we got last stream and i also did some work off stream so i'll catch you up with that in a little video that we'll play it's about seven or so minutes long uh to kind of catch you up to so you don't miss anything uh meaning the point of this show is to let everybody kind of get a, a sense of uh, how pieces are made from beginning to end, right? And so that means every bit of the process from the research gathering side to the, uh, all the way from every part, right? From the very, very beginning to the um, very end of rendering and putting into compositions and all that other fun stuff. So in case you haven't seen any of the other previous ones, I'm going to show you my, uh, what's this called, art station really fast. This is my art station. Uh, these are some of the previous ones that we did. This is the sage that I just wrapped up last week, or the week before, so you can see uh, some of those shots. So this is rendered in Unreal and then uh, composited in Photoshop. Uh, this is the caregiver. This one is also rendered in Unreal 5. And then uh, all the shots are done in uh, Photoshop as well. And then this one is artist also known as the creator and this one was actually rendered in marmoset tool bag five four four i think so we're going to show you that in a minute and i'll show you where we're at i uh, foolishly started to do a fbx export because we're going to be working more in unreal today uh, last week we did a lot more work in zbrush so i'm in the middle of doing an export so we'll get to that in a moment so i figured it'd be better to just go ahead and jump straight into the video uh, this video will catch you up on where we were so it'll start from the very beginning of the process you're going to see me sketching getting the initial idea out there and then we're going to go straight into zbrush you're going to see me doing some sculpting stuff for a while for those of you who watched last time you're going to see more additional sculpting stuff there and then i'll catch you up so let's go ahead and check out that video and i'll see you guys in a couple minutes all right so at the very very beginning of this we're going to start with some sketching uh this is symmetrical sketching in photoshop i used to like doing this uh, in procreate and i still do actually but i was having some troubles connecting to the stream in procreate so we're doing it in photoshop and it's actually nice in photoshop because they have the symmetrical sketching feature and you can also like adjust that to different orientations and stuff i think it's important to note that this is not something that is designed to be seen by other people art directors it's more for myself um to ideate to have some almost internal inspiration and to start working before i get into 3d uh, i find that just having a sort of a small mental picture helps me get moving when i was talking to people on the stream uh, somebody had mentioned the idea that the character could be floating and so i really liked that idea and i started kind of running with it and uh here's the the larger kind of floating character almost like a superman pose and somebody said they should be smaller so it's just kind of taking some feedback from the stream and ideating and playing around and i actually do like the idea of the character being a little smaller still bigger than a human probably you know seven to twelve feet tall but I like the idea that maybe this character who is the magician, who's going to be, you know, a prime deity, who's going to be somebody who's you know, one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful people, is not the biggest. I think that's a cool justification there. So now you see me jumping into 3D and you're going to see me start blocking out some of the shapes that I was working around with in Photoshop, especially from that symmetrical angle. So the first little bits here is mostly me just getting those pieces in play. And what I'm doing is I'm also treating, almost treating this like a bunch of pieces of uh, physical clay where I'm going to work all these elements as separate meshes and I'll later combine them. Uh, but at the beginning, it's really just easier to bring in these little things and kind of play with those proportions. And again, treat them like clay. Do not feel like you're trying to go for, you know, the, the tertiary or, or the design itself right away, but to be able to visualize the whole shape. Uh, at one time I find incredibly helpful and incredibly useful and it doesn't marry you into having to sculpt it all out of one piece or do anything really fancy. So here you see me creating this sort of collar. If you see those little things popping up at the bottom, that's uh, me trimming that out from the stream. Uh, I often like to show the questions that people are asking. So if you're 
asking questions today or at any of the other streams, I'm happy to, to highlight those and chat about them while we're working. So you're going to see that pop up quite a bit as I'm working and kind of putting in this neck piece here, putting in these collar pieces and just slowly getting the, the sculpt together. And again, the fun part and the easy part about working this as separate elements is, is it's actually really simple to ideate on shapes and to understand the shape relationship between those shapes because it's not a single mesh. When it's a single mesh, it can come, sometimes get complicated where you're, uh, you know, you're kind of fighting things back and forth and uh, you're, sometimes you're almost fighting the sculpt itself. You're fighting the mesh itself. And so, uh, you know, making it all these little separate pieces just makes it a little easier. While I was working, uh, I thought about the idea of making multiple arms. And I, I do actually like this idea, uh, especially some of the reference that I'm using for this is more demonology and more something that's going to be a bit more aggressive. This character in the pantheon of, of characters that I'm making is going to be the god of death. Um, and so something that evokes that creepy nature is is working well. And uh, as, as we work through the sculpt, I actually quite enjoy uh, the direction that we end up at the end. I did try doing six arms. That was the suggestion from the chat. It was just too much for me. Uh, so I ended up pulling it back to the four arms. But you can see here now, just adding those pieces one by one, I'm able to kind of establish what I like about the character and then slowly bring in new things. So I'm going to add some uh, these feet. I'm going to gently kind of pose this into that same position and uh, continue moving forward. You see me often flipping back to silhouette mode. You can do that by just, just hitting V on your keyboard, or you can switch it on the left-hand side. And here you can see I'm kind of playing around with the ideas for silhouettes, graphic silhouettes, what this character is going to look like. I went with something or tried something there that was more like a Pope hat. And here you see me uh, going to iterate with some ideas on a horn. So the... Uh, the basic geometry that ZBrush has has some options for horns, and so you're going to see me import those uh, mirror it over and then figure out the way and the orientation that I want. Initially I start with like this sort of Texas longhorn wide horns. That character definitely wouldn't be able to move their head but I do like the graphic of that. Uh, later I'll end up rotating that to feel a little bit different. Uh, and here's some of the reference that we end up looking for. These are beetles, Hercules beetles and rhino beetles. And some of the imagery that they have as far as the, the spikes and the style of uh, you know, carapace that they have is pretty interesting. So I, I'm going to duplicate the head here and basically just mimic and mirror some of the shapes from what those beetles have. And that was a really great graphic silhouette right there that I really quite enjoy. And now you can see me starting to kind of plus that out and spruce that up with adding those little bits on top. And what I'm doing with this is I'm actually using the Sculptress Pro feature. And that's what you see me do right there, pulling that stuff off. The Sculptress Pro feature is pretty amazing um, because it basically... Uh, allows you to add geometry on in any direction or any area that you want it to be. Now here you see me starting to iterate on a face. There's those horns that I angled and I put them in a different location. And you see me just kind of bouncing around from part of the body to part of the body, uh, plussing this out and continuing to work on the design. In the end, I think I'm going to go for some more, you know, spiky and aggressive shapes. Uh, and here you see me switching. This is actually work now that I've been doing after the stream. So if you watched the stream last time, this is stuff uh, that'll get us caught up to where we are today. And you see me going to start iterating on the head here. And I'm going to bounce around to little bits of the, of the body and all, all around in this section that I did off stream. I spent probably about an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours uh, working on this character. Just trying to, again, keep figuring out what the character is, get a head start for next stream and push it along. I think we're going to try to complete this character in four streams instead of the previous, which is going to be five. And just based on how much work I was able to do and the speed of what I was able to get the design in uh, off stream, I think that's an achievable goal. For those who are wondering about time, how much working time does it take to make a character like this or does four streams equal? Uh, it will probably be somewhere around the, the range of, I would say, 15 to 30 hours. Again, I'm still using that same methodology here. You can see me pulling and pushing all of these different and separate elements 
All these are still different meshes. I have not merged any of them together, and I don't know if I will, to be honest. I don't know if I need to. The design itself has a lot of these deep cuts into the surface and a lot of surface noise, so I might be able to just work it out as several different objects, and uh, it might not become an issue, but we'll see. If I need to merge them, I will, and I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. So you hear me playing, adjusting with the horns, figuring out the shapes, uh, using some of the bits of those to integrate into the face. Uh, I kind of like how there's these large, planar shapes there. That played into some of the shapes that I was doing with the creator, and a little bit on the caregiver as well. So I do want all of these characters to at least feel like they're in the same world and, and have existed in the same space. So calling back some of those shapes is a good thing, especially knowing that this is a prime deity, meaning this is something that will have been there before all of them. Now you can see me just flowing down the body, working on the abdomen section, and I'm going to continue doing this. And I do end up doing a little bit more work outside of this video uh, before the stream. So you're going to see some things that I didn't touch uh, once I show everybody where we're at now. But I'm really excited where this character is going, and I'm looking forward to wrapping it up uh, already, which is good. I'm, I'm So far, I'm enjoying this, and I'm looking forward to do more. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. So here we are, let me just full screen this. This is what you just saw. This is actually where we ended uh, last stream. Uh, so this is again where we ended last stream and what you saw kind of got us up to about this point. And I actually pushed it even further. I'll just zoom in a little bit more. Uh, so starting point, and this is where we're at on the video, and this is where we are now. So starting, ending. a little bit more of that. Give you a quick turnaround. Hide that in this view. We'll do this right here. So there we go. This is where we're at right so far. This is the general direction that the character's going. Um, and that's what we're at. Yeah, so I feel actually pretty good about how this character came together. Uh, I had a pretty good sense of the direction I wanted when I started, and I think you can tell that that helped. And also off stream, it helped me kind of keep pushing forward with it. I've also been using some new techniques uh, when sculpting. I'm using a lot more of the Sculptors Pro feature uh, and just adding details where I need them. So you'll see some parts of the body that have very little detail, uh, but then the other parts where it does have detail it's just called in. Uh, what I mean by that is like if you check out certain parts of this mesh, you'll see some of them are very dense and some of them are very not dense. This is the uh, Sculptors Pro feature where any of these little marks and areas that I'm carving in and creating are being, uh, that geometry is being generated by Sculptors Pro. So there is a no eye, there was no eyes. I kind of went to go back to a skull vibe. I might remove that. I don't think there'll be eyeballs in there. I'm not sure yet. I kind of just want it to fall into shadow. So we've got that going on. A couple questions. Uh, we had a question from Twitch, which was, do you have an order where you work from top to bottom? Uh, I would say generally I usually start with the head and the chest when I'm using that uh, approach. So if we go back to the original sculpt, you'll kind of get to see where that was, uh, meaning... I think I started here, and then I kind of combined it with this chest piece, uh, and then just slowly started bringing pieces together uh, and, and branching out from that. I think that's a, a the logical approach for me, at least, uh, is to start with the head and the chest and the shoulders, and then either do the legs or and or the the arms next, depending whatever one feels like it's going to be the best. So. Here we are. You can see some of uh, proportions have changed, but I think it's important to note that this is the very beginning uh, silhouette that we did. I'll hide this shortly. There we go. This is the very beginning silhouette that we did, and then this is the final silhouette. So even though there's a lot, uh, it's different for sure. Um, the general idea is pretty much the same uh, as far as you know the shapes, the organization of it. Um, 
generally it's kind of the same. It's just, it's enhanced, right? So from every angle, I'm just kind of continuously iterating and pushing on it a little bit further. So, yeah, that's kind of how it is. But again, the silhouettes may be different, but not widely different, whereas the actual result itself uh, is pretty different. The insides and the resolve of the forms and all that stuff. So, so that's what we got for the character. Uh, I have exported this uh, as an FBX. It is in Unreal. And so today we're going to um, work in Unreal. We're going to basically be creating the set for this character uh, for where all the rest of the actual rendering, like we saw on my art station, will, will be taking place. So let's hide this. And here it is on Unreal. Ta-da! Uh, so here we are in Unreal. I've also downloaded off-stream as many of the assets as possible that I'm going to use. I'm going to be using some of this medieval village stuff uh, and I'm going to kind of have some of this rocky mossy elements. I think, think it's going to be some sort of a swamp like a medieval swamp. So I'm going to be uh, populating this with Quicksoul Megascan assets today, generally putting out the flow of what the uh, environment and world will look like, generally placing things. Uh, it's kind of the same mindset that I have for this, meaning uh, this gives us the idea of where everything will be going but it might not be to the final level of where it's going to be. We're going to be doing the same thing here in Unreal today. So let's uh, let's jump in. Uh, I still have a bunch of Megascan assets to add, so I'm going to do that as we're kind of working along. But my general idea was to have some form of like a river uh, or a little bit of a pond with a house, a medieval house here that we'll use these uh, Megascan assets for. Uh, and we'll kind of do that. I was also exploring a little bit with, uh, I'm using the dynamic sun and sky again with different set types of lighting. So right now we're not gonna see a ton of different types of lighting, but I do kind of like these uh, sunsets that it creates. I also like the moon shots that it creates because the moon is pretty uh, bright. So we could do a nighttime shot as well, uh, which might be kind of fun. Looks like there's something wrong going on in the sky. It's all stretched. We're gonna figure out that. I do think, though, uh, as, you know, it being a swamp, that it could be interesting to do the weather effects. I showed this in the last stream, or the last character, but the dynamic sun sky has all of these uh, presets, so you can choose clear skies, which is what we have now, partially cloudy, which will give you uh, volumetric uh, clouds, cloudy, which is different types of volumetric clouds overcast which is obviously much more overcast and we can actually see the fog there if we back off we'll get to see how it should fade away it's not that kind of you can see it over here what else do we got in here we have a light rain which is kind of what i was thinking about exploring a rain which is more heavy so you can see it's kind of working there we have other options would be Thunderstorm, which is actually one of my favorites because it starts calling in all these things. I might need to actually integrate this right cor correctly. Right now it's just um, kind of working. It needs to be darker, I think. The time of day probably needs to be adjusted. Oh, but you see there's actual lightning in this, which is my favorite part about it. Uh, then there is snow. We will not be using this. Blizzard, we will not be using this. So we'll for now just use partially cloudy. That'll give us a better sense of more beauty lighting. Uh, I will be pulling this off the screen, just or at least hiding it over my head right here, so it's not too, too out of the way. But at least you can kind of get a sense of what's going on there. It just kind of cl clouds up the screen. So this is what we're going to be working on today. Uh, I have a couple questions. Uh, looks like uh, somebody who's watched my tutorial back in 2014. That's awesome. My Silver Surfer one. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. That, that was a fun one to do. I still I still really like that character, uh, which is interesting when you work on characters because after a while you're like, I don't know if I like this anymore. This is so old, but that's one that I still do. All right, let's get a content browser. We'll put this over here, and we're going to add some more meshes and start building this out. So I'm going to go into my Megascans folder, 3D Assets folder. And I've already got this, some of these things set up. So the chopped wood, this anvil, the lava rock is over here. This cliff, I think, is this one. Or is this this one? I'm not sure which one is which. Let's drag it in. That's a different one. So I'm going to get these assets kind of in here. And what I'm doing when I'm just doing this is basically to 
just create a kit. So rather than having it all be, you know, so I think this is too many pieces to grab. Yeah. We'll put this person here. Just want to have a kit to be able to grab things nice and easily so that it's easy to use rather than um, fishing for it all the time. So this is a set of medieval walls that they have created for in Quixel. Uh, I've downloaded or have started downloading many of these. Again, I did as much as I could off stream uh, just because it takes a little while to do the whole download process. Um, just get it all set up. This is like a fence. So I can make some uh, fence posts with this. This appears to be some rocks. Again, I kind of want to do a riverbed thing, so I was kind of thinking of the idea of maybe some of these. Just quickly, quick example would be like... Um, You know, so in between here might be where that uh, river rock will happen. And on the side of that is where we're going we're gonna to have a little settlement with, you know, some chopped wood. And we're going to put some forest in the background. And we're going to, you know, make it a bit more interesting than, than the kit playground you're seeing right now. But this is this is step one of getting all this stuff in here. We already have this one in here. Hammer, barrel. We already got that. Okay, cool. Uh, I just need to go through and get a couple more surfaces. Well, the only one I really have right now is this rock. So you see kind of what that looks like. That's not what the floor is going to be. Uh, but you can get a sense of what it looks like. Do you ever work uh, with level streaming? You wonder how I wonder how... Uh, I have not done too much level streaming. No. Uh, right now I'm just kind of doing individual scenes. So we're kind of just going that way rather than doing like a much larger larger uh, setup. So I'm going to open my bridge here. I need to add a bunch of elements here still. Uh, I'll show you what I've got in my favorites, or not, sorry, or in my local. So here's some more elements that we're going to add that are not currently in. You'll see here's that post. Here's some of these other elements. I'm probably just going to start blocking up the house and some of these stuff things first. But I'm going to add like this wall here. Uh, again, I'll show you, and this is the ex a perfect example of why I try to do as much of this off stream as possible uh, because I just clicked add and I can't add anything right now, till now. So now I can select something else. So the only complaint that I have had so far with Unreal uh, and using this style of workflow is just that there's a bit of a time sink into getting the assets actually into your scenes. Meaning, again, I just hit add and now I can't add anything. And I'm, I just want to add these three walls so I can start playing with this stuff. I wish if I had to request one feature, it would be some form of a multi-add. Uh, I, I think that Unreal could really benefit from that. Some way of saying, like, add these 30 objects. Because otherwise you sit here and uh, all of the assets that I have downloaded for... Uh, speed when in the viewport I've downloaded all of them as nanite objects but nanite objects are the largest size of the object it's the highest polygon count as far as I'm aware so or at least it's pretty high uh, and that means that the actual things that you're adding I don't know if anybody can hear at all but the um, my computer is sounding like it's about to take off and go into space so it's just one of those things these, some of these sh should have been nanite, and I'm seeing them only as high quality, which is odd. Let's get out of here. Grass. I know I picked some grass. Some nice little swamp grass here. Again, this is just stuff that takes a long time to get in. I wish it didn't, but for some reason it does. This should be nanite quality. Unless it didn't have nanite available, we'll see. See, some of this one is nanite. This one is nanite. I 
Yeah, some of these are not, so we'll have to figure that out as we continue. Never seen the Nanite thing. Nanite is specific to Unreal 5. It is basically a way in which they are handling incredibly high poly counts. Meaning the poly count doesn't matter once you have it converted to a Nanite object. Which is pretty amazing. And, and from my experience using the Nanite stuff, uh, it's, it's legit. It's true. But as you can tell, again, just from the couple minutes that we're here hanging out, trying to get this rolling, uh, it takes time to download all this stuff. Some of these objects will be in the gigabytes. Uh, for example, the tree set that they released is, I think, 9 gigabytes. So just to get all this stuff in takes a lot of time. And frankly, a lot more time than I wanted to. But once it's in, we can go over to our content browser and start selecting things. So we can say, here's a bunch of our cool little grasses. We'll use these with foliage later. Uh, more bog uh, plants. Those will be in our foliage later as well. Uh, I do want to get some of the materials. Cool. So these are like some sw swamp grass. All this fun stuff. So we'll get these in. Materials don't seem to take near as long as for when it comes to importing. So that takes a little faster, but we've got some different types of water here. Swamp water, uh, riverbed water, gross water, you know, so we'll be able to kind of play around with this a little bit. And we'll, we'll later use um, material blending and textures to get this stuff going. So I'm just going to try to add these as fast as possible. Apologies for everybody who's having to just sit here and wait and watch this because I know it's not the most exciting part, but it is an actual process. There's only so much you can do off stream. I've tried, like I said. But it just takes some time. I'd say I probably spent about two to three hours, probably about two hours last night downloading objects, getting the scene set up. And so far, I'm, that's the part of the pipeline that I'm trying to figure out how to speed up. It could be that I need to download it all off stream. That might be a way to do that just in general have a big library but I don't I think the library of this stuff is huge quick question for the uh, for the stream can, there is music playing can you hear the music at all or is it too loud too quiet I can even tell it's there So we can just show these very briefly. We, shot, we saw this one. We'll be able to use this later. This is Mossy Ground. It's pretty cool. Into this. The only thing that I haven't found or haven't liked is the displacements aren't coming across. Let me just check something. Let's say I pick this one. I had heard that displacements were depreciated, but then somebody said they were fine. So I'm not entirely sure. You can cl uh, select multiple materials here, by the way, to make a blend material. We'll be doing that at some point. You hear it sounds fine. Awesome. Thank you all very much. All right, what else we got in here? So we got some rocks. We got some more rocks. You can kind of get a quick vibe of what we're kind of talking about. This is cool swamp water. We need some displacement for sure, but from here it kind of looks nice. But the lower we get to the ground, the less it kind of holds up. But you can kind of see what the... Let's like just do a quick uh, weather change. Yeah, you can kind of get a quick vibe check of what I'm going for or will be going for. Even in here, we can go in here. We'll change the weather. Let's try to change that time of day. A little dark. So 
So you can get some cool effects with this stuff because it's, the reflection of it is awesome. And it'll help break up the different types of materials quite a bit. Even if we do like a full nighttime shot, I think it'll still give us some of this, which is what I'm kind of hoping for. All right, let's go back to that weather and let's make it cloudy or partially cloudy. So now you got this one. What else are we looking at? We have a riverbed, which again will be nice for. What's the grid on? Let's hide that grid. This will be nice for kind of the edge of where this uh, little settlement is going to be. So, even as a quick example, what we're kind of going to do is basically have like a little bit of a, a rock bed, right? We're going to find a way to make this integrate well. It's going to then call into this water, and we'll have a little bit of a river, river. We'll have a little house kind of over here on the left or on the right. Uh, kind of get this all set up. Let's see what else we got. Different type of water. A gross type of water. This works pretty well, though. Some soil. Some wet stones. And some wild grass. It's a little big for what we're looking at. But that's okay. This is a good starting point to get this all going. So thank you. A uh, quick question from Twitch. Uh, for a person who wants to build and create characters and hopefully create their own IP, uh, where should I start? I think that's a hard question. I mean, uh, you. I think at some point you just have to start. Um, if you want to make your own IP and franchise, obviously you just got to figure out what that is. Um, but I think that if you're somebody who's beginning your journey in art, I don't know if that's who you are, but if you're somebody who's beginning your journey there, um, start at the basics before you try to get into something bigger, right? Make sure you've kind of got, uh, you've got a good starting point before you try to jump into doing something that big. Do you plan to texture the demon? And if so, what program? Yes. Uh, I'll probably do most of the actual painting in ZBrush. So I'll, I, I was able to do this last time, but I didn't do any material work. So I'll, I'll, I'll either be doing it here uh, I want to kind of play around with Substance Painter. I haven't played with that in a long time. Uh, or, and, or um, Quixel. I found Quixel Mixer was really easy to use, but it wasn't the most robust program. And it started to get pretty slow uh, once I started adding a lot of other uh, elements into it. So I don't know if that's what I'll end up using it as. But I will be texturing it. All right, what do we need in this? We need to get kind of like a landscape. Uh, I was thinking about using the landscape. I haven't used it in Unreal 5, though. And I don't think I really need to. Actually, now that I see it, where is it? We don't really need it. I think we just kind of need to get some small elements together and figure out like, kind of where this house is. Uh, let's get that weather back. There we go. Just even partially cloudy. Time of day. Right in the middle. Some more overhead lighting. Cool. All right, let's get started. Um, I need to create some rocks. I need to create some hills. I like this one as a good starting point. And I might need to, to download more because I think that uh, I got some in the content browser, but I'm not sure that they're all the ones that I, w I wanted. Um, so let me see if they're in my local. This I like. Let's add this real fast. Let's get some of these stones. You can kind of see what I'm going for is like the stones, rocks, uh, at the edge of like a, a cr creek kind of bed. And that's where all these bigger elements, I think, are going to call in. These are probably going to be more things that are specific to the scene. Meaning, like, right around where the character would be. I realize I didn't actually go in and add more to the kit. 
which is what I need to do. So let's go through here. I'm on my other monitor, so you won't be able to see me uh, browsing. But frankly, browsing through the content browser is not going to be the most riveting thing. But here you can see like a, a mossy embankment. This will be perfect for what we're wanting to start with. So I'm just going to take this stuff and just like pull it over here. Let's take this stuff. And pull it over here. Great. Let's pull this stuff. Just select it. Holding down control to select these. Just get it out of the way. Just get it out of the way. And this will kind of be like our starting point. This is just a plane that I created in Unreal. We can use this as a starting point. Uh, and you can actually sculpt on this stuff. So this is not the material that I'm specifically going to want. So let's find a quick material. I know I said I was going to get the kit going, but I do kind of want to get this set up first. Let's get a nice starting material. That feels good. And let's go to the modeling area. Uh, there's a, all these sections up here. Sorry, there's the landscape editing mode. Uh, which you can see now. I guess this is where I would need to make it, huh? Okay, yeah, let's use this then. I forgot it was up here. Let's do a landscape. Let's use a new material. I can use a new one later. I'll drag and drop the same one that I have in there right now. And we'll say, does it need to be that big, though? No, it doesn't. But that's fine. Is it okay to do retopology in ZBrush using Z spheres and not Meyer Blender? Yeah, of course. Uh, whatever works for you, honestly. Let's tone this down a little bit. We'll say it's like four by four. Just doesn't need to be that big. I'm sure I'll regret that later for some reason, but let's do it. Create. Cool. There it is. You see that the texture is there. It is nice and small. And this is where we can actually start using some of the sculpting tools in here. We'll play with these materials later. We'll adjust the actual uh, brushes and stuff. You can bring in more brushes as ways you want to sculpt, right? You can see I'm just kind of drawing and uh, uh, manipulating it. But that's actually pushing it down into the plane that's below it. So let's do a little bit of this simple brush. That's fine size here sculpt uh, let's go up let's try another material too I think we can just quickly drag and drop nope doesn't work that way anyways the nice thing about this is we can get some quick stuff here I'm using my tablet which I haven't been able to find a way to get the tablet to work well with Unreal by the way I don't know if that's unusual for anybody else but I'm going to use shift. Shift is going to push down. That's where we're going to see some of this. And this can actually be a good way for us to try that water. So let's try some of these water ones. That's that really bog swamp one. This is a pretty good one. I think it's probably going to blend pretty well. This is another solid one. This is also pretty gross. Would not want to swim in that. Let's use this one. All right. The reason I'm picking this one, uh, or what I'm really doing here, in case uh, I haven't been clear, is this is going to basically be uh, the river that we're going to create. So I can use the brush here to adjust the strength and the size and the fall off. Then I'll come in here real quick and I'll scale this up. It's not gonna be the right size, that's okay. But just to create a bigger river body. And as we get lower to the ground, you'll actually see what we're kind of looking at. And now I can tell that's a little bit intense. 
So let's smooth some of this stuff out. Kind of just getting this all set up for what will eventually be more interesting. Again, that's the same mindset we've been using for other things. Start easy, get harder. Now we can take some of this, and this is how I'll just quickly adjust it. I was wondering if this would have like a translucency option to it, but it is just a single material. So we can start creating a bit of a scene in this environment. Uh, I like this idea of this rock and maybe this something. This is kind of where I want this settlement to be is over here. So we're going to probably need to push some of this down. I might just need to push this down a little bit in general. Any thoughts on World Creator and its applications for things like this? As in, would you ever use another World Creator to make your scene? Uh, I've never used that, but I know that uh, Alex Alvarez has. He has been exploring with uh, other ways to create environments. And he's, from what I recall, I don't know if it was World Creator or Gaia, but he's been playing with that and seemingly enjoying it quite a bit. All right, let's get some of these in here. So now we have our other elements that I hadn't brought in. So we have this mossy embankment we brought in. That should be this one. Yep. We have our mound. Did we do this yet? Nope, but I like it. Okay. Stay over here. We have another one of these. We have more of these. More of these. So you see a lot of different types of rocks, different types of materials here. This is all going to help us differentiate things and kind of set us up for a success when it comes to actually you know, getting this thing working. And here's a couple of the walls that I was wanting. Ooh, nice little tree stump. This could be cool, just like starting to place some of these elements around. The image for that I have in my mind for the scene, and I had done this early in the Photoshop sketch, was basically that this character here would be approaching, seeing somebody in the, in the foreground. So let's go ahead and just pretend that we're setting this up for the final result. So push this person over here. They're going to be seeing them. Well, hello. And this person is going to be here. them even further. Oh. Right here. They will be floating. And so we'll sort of have this break here. I do want to get as much of this river as possible, and I think that can be an easy thing for me to carve in. And then I want to put like a little house right here. So we're just going to set this all up. So let's do it. Uh, Nordic Beach, what is this? Do we already have this? Nope. But I like it. So we can use the landscape as we need to. Uh, we'll adjust it more later in the future. Again, it's just kind of to get the world there. So let's get a couple of these things. I think that might be the same thing the same thing yes okay I 
kind of like the idea of this, like, let's get this tree stump. This is where they chop all their firewood. This is where they chop their firewood. And I think I have it over here, yep. Just try a firewood block. So we're gonna set up like where this potential scene could be laying down. Like maybe this person. I'll like put this behind the house so it's not like the central element that's important here. We like it. We want it there, but we don't want it to be like the thing that everybody sees. So we'll start making a house. And we'll say that they also have like these things somewhere around here this is like the a barrel like an anvil it can kind of sit over here maybe the house bits are not in just to be clear but we'll get them maybe it'll be sitting against a the wall there's no reason this wall can't sit here Uh, something you can also do if you don't want to use landscapes is you can actually, I'll just duplicate this and shrink it down. I'll show you another way. You can use the same types of sculpting abilities. So let's take another um, ground that we liked. I think this was one of them, but there was a slightly different one that I liked. This is the one we're using. There we go. And again, we'll use a, we will use a, uh, what's it called? layer blend material later for this. I think this will be fine. But what I can do is I can come over here, take this material or this actual object, and you can come into this section. Uh, I think it's this section. Is this one? Brush editing. There should be a modeling toolkit. that material. Is it a plug-in? It should add like an additional function. Tools. Plug-in? Plug-ins. Modeling. There it is. Modeling tools. Uh, I'm going to save. Because it's going to say you have to restart Unreal to do this. Are you sure you want to enable it? Yes, it must be restarted. Okay, restart. So we'll join that in one second. Let's see. We've got a question or a comment from Twitch. It's Edward from Twitch. You always have trouble adjusting the lighting in your scenes. You never manage to light the scenes where you want it, especially if it's supposed to be realistic. Uh, yeah, that's pretty common. Uh, I think what often it is is that you might be trying a little too hard, uh, trying to put too many lights in an area, too many lights in a scene. Sometimes it's easier to just let it kind of happen. Uh, okay, here we go. That's a weird shadow. Somehow we erased it. So you can select this now. Here's this additional thing that's popped out to so the modeling mode. Here you can build all this stuff. But I think you can use vertex sculpting. This is different than what I was expecting. It also might just be because it's a plane. I'm sure if I imported a different plane that it would be different. Let's see what happens if we close this. Create, shapes, sphere. Now let's come in here. Sculpting. Yeah. You can see that now it can adjust the shapes in, and there's a smooth features. There's a bunch of other different types of features in here as well. So you can do that on basic geometry. So you can bring in your own geometry. That, uh, for me, I've 
been trying to create more stuff just in Unreal, in Unreal to kind of help me understand a little bit more of how to make things uh, or how it really kind of functions. So if I hit accept, you'll see that it's kind of changed the shape a little bit, not a ton. Let's try again. It should make it work. Accept. It has not accepted. I did say it's in beta, so I'm not really sure why that's happening. But you, there are tools. Seemingly, I'm, either I don't know how to work them or it's not wanting to work right now. You can see I can move the corner of this. But when I accept it, nothing is happening. Why? I don't know. We can do that later. So... I was just trying to point out that there can be other ways to do it rather than just using the landscape material. So let's continue. This, and then we'll start placing some of these walls. That's what I was wanting to do. So we'll get this wall. Uh, let's like make a little wall section. I'm not gonna be too precious about the locations of these right now. I think things are going to change a little bit as I continue to work it. So I'm not super concerned about that. But just going to get a little bit of a setup going. And this is just kind of like playing with Legos, you know, we're going to figure out where this location is. I don't know if I like the wall being there as far as I, how I had set it up. Maybe it would be like over here in the distance. But this is how easy it can be or how fun it can be, honestly, to just start exploring some of these shapes. can do it on the same things here at least you like I was saying you can like I could come in and smooth these objects they can take a long time because they're nanite objects which uh, can be very slow but you can see they're still manipulatable if you really needed to we render in the end one image or a camera animation movement I've been working up to doing camera animation movements but I've been hearing uh, from a lot of people that the movie render queue inside of Unreal 5, which is what we're using, is a little bit uh, work in progress, to say it nicely right now. So not just yet for the animations. It's not to say I don't want to, it's just seems like it might be more hassle than it's worth. So what I've been using mostly is um, just doing individual images. more of these in their pack that I'm probably going to download just so it doesn't look at all exactly the same. I'm going to hide and disguise some of this anyways because I rotated it so that it was like this. I'm trying to find like a good place for this other bit of the valley.
I kind of want to put some fog in here and start getting the mood going. I think that'll help a lot. Will I be changing the HDRI? Uh, it's actually not using an HDRI. Uh, it's using the Ultra Dynamics Sky from the Unreal Marketplace. And what I can do is I can just adjust the time of day here uh, to whatever I feel like is appropriate. I can also move you know, where the sun direction is and all that fun stuff. So if I want to spin it or you know change change anything here, uh, that's relatively easy to do. And it kind of just goes like this. So you can see the actual sun rotating. These are volumetric clouds right now. So when it's behind it versus not, you have different types of shadows. Uh, so I'll be adjusting this stuff in the future, yeah. But for now, just kind of keeping going with it. Uh, but what I do want to change is the fog. Now, this has a little bit of... I haven't loved portions of this. Meaning, if I come in here and I change the weather type to light rain, which is something we were exploring, uh, it feels like the fog is not working right now. Because I can still see that edge quite well. Uh, it is going away when I go into a heavier version, or you see it starting to happen. And even a little snowy scene could be interesting. Could be cool. You can get it to where it actually sticks to the surface. You can see it's doing it now. Uh, but when you do some of the other ones, it's something we could play with that I kind of want to try, to be honest. Do you do snow or blizzard? I think it was in blizzard. If you hit play, you can get it to... Uh, see how the, the wind is kind of going across the surface of the objects. So that could be an interesting element here. A lot of R&D to figure out what that looks like, but I think that could be fun. Uh, anyways, I was going to Cloudy, and I wanted to play with the fog. So you can just dial all these down until you get to the one you want. Volumetric fog particles. No. Might be in the other one. All right, let's try the sky itself. Basic controls, animate time, volumetric clouds. 2D clouds, 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 clouds. Ooh, backlighting, kind of like that. Why does it look like Unreal renders things in real time, whereas other programs can't? Uh, yes, that's because it's a game engine. So um, Unreal is a game engine, so it's just naturally in, you know, been built to render things in real time for a game. Height fog, there we go. I'm sure if I turn this up, there it is. This is what I wanted to play with. So now you can see how far the fog is actually functioning. This is how dense it is. And this is the density. Meaning like when we get into it, how far away is it clipping? And this is going to be our distances. So are we in the fog or not in the fog is the question. And this is where we can start getting some more uh, graphical looks. And this is part of why when we go back to the character design itself, I wanted a really strong silhouette. So this was, this is the sculpt when we ended last stream. And this is where we got to last stream. And I wanted to maintain as much of the silhouette as possible because I had a feeling that I would be in the fog or this character would be in the fog. This is a little extreme. But uh, to give you just an example of that, uh, I think it'll be nice. And this kind of stuff, this reflections, 
It helps so much. It's really, really good at that. So we'll probably do something that's kind of more like this, kind of a scene where the character's coming in. And I don't think I want it to be that heavy. You know, you can dial this back. If you hit this button here, this little uh, return button will actually reset it to whatever the default properties are. So this is the default properties. The difference is I changed the fog start distance. So if I turn this uh, back up or down, nothing's going to happen until I make it a little bit more dense. So we'll just say like 3. And we'll say 10. And then we'll turn the fog distance up. And this is the one that's a depth. Uh, you can also do a height fog. So you can go create. We'll just turn this off for a second. Turn this off. And go uh, create, I believe it is. VFX. Visual effects. And uh, exponential height fog. This is kind of the same thing. You notice it has very similar settings. So it's the fog density and the fog fall off. Right now it seems to not be working. Uh, I think that might be because what I brought in, the other thing, is already there. So I'm going to crank all these up and see if I can get it to appear. Yeah, I thought so. Meaning the other one already has this set up in there. So I can actually just delete this. Because this already has it built in. It's basically the same features, or most of the same features. I'm going to need to spend some time dialing this in, however. It should be pretty fun. You can also use the basic stuff in, in Unreal. There's a really fast and easy way to do this. I just tend to like using this one a little bit more uh, because it's it has a better nighttime and it has better clouds uh, off the beginning. But you can come in and change any of these things if you need to or want to. Uh, shun, sun shafts, yep. I want to make sure that's volumetric fog. There we go. There's the one. So this is the difference between fog and volumetric fog. So what's the difference? Well, uh, first off, it's there's more, but it has more uh, volume to it. So if we start adjusting these things, we'll go back to like 0.2. Uh, it just has a more natural feel to where it's not a big clipping plane as before. And as you get closer to something, you can still see the, the object pretty well. And then things in the distance begin to change. So volumetric fog is pretty key feature this is the thickness so we're going to play around with this briefly the best thing about unreal or one of the best things in my opinion is how fast this is let's turn this to two one. Play with some of these sliders. Sometimes they don't seem to do anything until you have uh, it turned up quite a bit. So that you can see the color during the day versus at night, which means at night it might look very, very different. Let's see what that looks like. So let's go back here and let's adjust the time of day. So you see at night now, even though it's darker, there's not as much fog. Whereas during the day, there's a considerable amount of fog. And we could do this both ways. So if you're doing a scene in which you want you know, to do a time of day or animate or something like that, you can have it appear like the fog is appearing at night or during the day or whatever you want. Turn that to one. I'm going to turn this down a little bit.
Oh, this is a cool feature. I'll show you this one. I used this in a previous project. Uh, let's go back to, let's just turn the fog off. So zero. Uh, let's go to the time of day and we'll make it nighttime. Uh, we'll make the clouds itself. We'll leave those clouds because they're kind of nice. Let's go into the sky. You can choose to use auroras instead of these auroras. So you get this nice little aurora going on, which is pretty awesome. Definitely something I like using. I'm going to use. Um, we can take the clouds out to show that better. And it kind of stays the whole time, which is cool. There's some weird tear going on right now. I'll have to fix that later. You see the pinch. That shouldn't be uh, visible. It somehow feels like it got rotated. So I'm just going to see if I can just grab this thing. Rotate? Oh. There we go. Better auroras. It was like the moon being bigger. I made the moon bigger last time. I don't know if we'll use the moon, but we can scale the moon. Maybe that's making it too hard to see. This is all kind of set up here. I just really really enjoy this thing uh so it's really fun to play with you know we were spent way too much time playing around in the sky settings and the fog settings so let's go back to our just collapse all this stuff auroras exposure mobile blah 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 just collapse all these so we don't have to do it later great height fog we'll just put one again that's a little heavy so we'll say 0.5 0.25 is not bad. 0.25, we'll start there. You can also turn this up if we want to say 10. You'll see that that might change a little bit. Just crank all this up and see what happens. Oh, that's way too high. Fog strength. Oh, God. Yeah, we don't need this. One is just fine. And let's go back to our time of day. I think I was doing like 1200. It's like a nice daytime scene. And this is like, well, not even enough now. Just trying to get a general sense of what the space is going to be like. I don't want to adjust it a ton. Uh, the goal of what I'm kind of trying to do is um, I'm basically trying to set the scene so that when I start building it, that I know what I'm doing uh, or I know what the end result, <coughs> excuse me, the, what the end result is going to be. Uh, yes, you can and I have been building the scene in this right where it's basically like this is almost like beauty lighting right this is a, a beauty pass where we're not really going to be doing too much we're just kind of doing a layout and figuring out what things are going to be that's why it was the wrong kind of fog all right so now i have a better sense of what this is actually going to look like don't know what the lighting is going to be just yet, so I have to figure that out. What is the sky plugin I'm using? It's called Ultra Dynamic Sky. To be clear, you don't have to use this. You can go into the Windows Environment Light Mixer. If you pull this off, I'll just save real fast and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You will need to, to create your own custom setups here. But if you come in here, you can see it's added all of these elements of Ultra Dynamic Sky. That's because it's calling in this. 
if you removed all these, like if I come in here and remove all these, let's just make a new level real quick and we'll try that. So let's like new level test. Save. Yeah, we'll save. Cool. There's nothing in here. That's fine. That means also notice that all of the things this is something about Unreal. If you've never used Unreal before, uh, it's important to note that there is no uh, consistency in the outliner. So now that look at the outliner is gone. It's completely empty. It's because I'm in a new environment. I'm in a new world. So I need to grab. We'll grab like one of those outcroppings. You see, there's no, literally no lights. It's a completely black scene from the beginning, except except for the widgets that seem to cast uh, emissive lights, which is actually kind of cool. Uh, we'll get some, I don't know, something else that's large. Here we go. This is a big one. So you see that there's something here, but there's nothing there. All you have to do in a blank scene like this to start from the very beginning is you go window, environment, light mixer. It'll pop up in this, and it gives you all these buttons here. All you have to do is you click these four buttons. Create skylight, create atmosphere, create sky atmosphere, create volumetric cloud. And what that does, you can see it automatically created a light for us. I can now go into the details or the outliner and you'll see it's created one of each of those for us. Uh, I'm going to just add a landscape here just to create one to make it really big. Not because I want to adjust it, but just again for demonstration sake. We'll grab this and pull it down quite a ways and maybe get on this side of it so we can pull it up again. All right, so you can see it created all those lights for us. Note that this is not looking great. So let's go into environment light mixer. We're going to come here and we're going to say we want to make this show normal amount of details. By default, it's showing you minimal details. This is important to note if you've never used this. So you can come in here and say normal details. And now it has way, 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 way more information. Uh, we want to, where is it called? No, nope. I think it's under the skylight. Real-time capture. This is important when we want real-time capture. And you can just turn on any of these other things. Go to our details. And turn your directional light wherever it is. So it should start to get a little bit better. It looks like something is a little busted right now, though. But anyways, for, I don't want to spend too much time troubleshooting this test scene. But you can turn on real-time capture. You can turn on... There's a way to just get it to set up and it'll work like right away. Oh, there we go. I just had to flick some other switch, turn it off and on again. And now you see that it is working. It has clouds automatically set up on us in here for us. As we go to nighttime, it will also create nighttime scenes. And this is a single light, so it's it's generating its own HDRs. It's got some really beautiful skies and stuff here too. So if you don't want to download a plugin, if you don't want to do that other kind of stuff, you don't have to. It doesn't have a nighttime, which is why I use the other one. Honestly, is more for the nighttime more than this. I think this looks great. These volumetric clouds can be great, and uh, you do get the set here where you can come in here and change any of this to do whatever you want. So this is a great option for you if you don't want to don't want to go in and use a, a plugin. Don't need to save that though. Here we are. This is back where we were. Uh, I need to find the flow of the scene. Uh, I do think it's going to be probably more of a nighttime scene the more I think about it though. Just feels like it might be. Let's make a little bit of a house. Let's just start placing some of these objects a little bit more appropriately so we don't have this big old tiling landscape around here.
So eventually this, all these little pieces that I'm going to put in are going to feel more connected and feel more uh, powerful, more interesting. But for now, they're just kind of being placed in as proxy placeholder elements. All right, so we said there'd be a wall. This wall will just kind of make it go over here. It doesn't need to be that big, does it? Yeah, maybe it would, but maybe, maybe they might have like animals. They need to contain. and flip them around. Oops. This is for a fence. I don't know if I'll use this fence post, but we'll toss it over here for now. This is going to be like our playground where we're not really using any of this stuff for now. It's probably going to be a door. We'll use this door. cool about this is it really is playing with Lego kits and if you don't mind you know just creating your ideas out of and using other people's assets to get there this is a perfectly fine starting place uh, it reminds me a lot of Legos reminds me a lot of um, you know, things like Minecraft in a way where you're taking things that exist and you're just going to make something new out of it one. Probably would have a window though. So we'll just take these, spin it around. So shut windows. And then we'll just grab the whole thing. The chance that we'll see both sides is pretty slim. We'll get this here. Let's go into our content browser. I have one up on my other monitor. You're not going to be able to see it. But it is over here. I'm looking for the, it's like the A part of the house. Seems like I didn't download one. Or I did download one. I didn't add one. So I'll go back into the bridge local these are all things we'll add later Can i get a mossy log let's add that now we might as well nanite the highest level ever um the story popping out to me is that the god of death has come to collect their dues from someone who evoked their powers previously yeah that was kind of something similar that i've been thinking rob that this person you know they're back for a reason right so I definitely agree with you. Thank you for that. Uh, Pablo, you recently felt like every project has to be my best project. And in result, you haven't made much progress. Do you have any tips to combat this? Good question. Um, tips to combat that is, it sounds like you're just being way too hard on yourself. Um, to be honest with you. It's not really going to be the best thing for you if you expect that every single time you're going to do something that it's always going to be the best work of your life um, the reason is you're going to be putting so much pressure on yourself that's just not healthy to put so much pressure on yourself that every time it has to be great you know I mean not every artist's work is their best work uh, and the reason that I think that it's important to, to say is that you're going to find that if you feel like every time it has to be your best work, you're not going to try new things because eventually you're just going to do the same old thing that you've been doing 
the, you know you'll find you'll find at some point you know if you don't already have it a workflow for you that's good right you're going to find a workflow that's solid and you're going to say oh this workflow works for me really well and now i know how to to make something good but then if every time it always has to be you know like you're saying your best work you're not going to continue to try new things and you're not going to continue to innovate because the way you get better is by failing you get better at things by failing and you get better at things by learning from your failures so in taking the mindset that you have which is normal by the way you're not allowing yourself to grow because you're not allowing yourself to fail so the thing that I would say is try something nif new try something different try something hard uh, and accept that you're probably not going to nail it and it might be bad and nobody might ever see it maybe do a project that nobody it's you're not expecting somebody else to see that might be healthy the door back here we're gonna have to put some planes up here We'll do this in a second. We'll just do a, make a quick one though. Uh, shapes, shapes, plane. There's probably some really good shapes for this or textures for this that already exist. For now, we'll just take this here. Turn off our rotational snap. go I should have done double-sided maybe I should have done a cube I should have done a cube it's okay we're gonna have to adjust this anyways but we can just do a quick bad texture on this just so it's not like as terrible I could also just come into the content browser and say roof Roof. Uh -huh. Come on, give me something. Roof tiles, slate wood. That could work. Oh, here we go. This one or this one? Probably this one. Download. Put it in there. Uh, Kyle Andrew from Twitch has given some good advice here, saying a good way to, to not self sabotage, to give yourself deadlines. I agree. Deadlines and very specific goals is very helpful. If you don't have them, sometimes you just meander and you never really find the goal. You never really get there. Because uh, you don't need to. Why is it so checkerboarded? Oh, I think it's compiling a texture. This is fine for now. 
just so it doesn't stick out too badly as far as something that exists in this world. We'll UV it and make it look better in the future. But let's take a yeah, corner. Let's grab this corner over here. Turn back our rotational snap. That way we're, we know we're just working with squares and stuff like that. Take uh, maybe this chunk. The chance that we're going to get too far over here is not too much, but it's enough. We don't want to have to deal with it. All right, we've got some cool pieces in. I feel like we need a lot more of this, so let's get some of these things in here. Some of this might be things that exist on the world. So this might be some of this, maybe. I'm not loving the ground plane. It's kind of distracting, so I'm kind of trying to find a ways to cover it. Right now, just kind of exploring, seeing if any of this works. I can also change that that rot, that bed, that river bed. I might do that actually. Let's just see, like, if we turn some of these into like more things. different than this side. There's no reason we couldn't combine them. Let's take this. If you ask something related to project packaging, yeah, I, I don't know if I'll be able to give you an answer, but I, you're always welcome to ask. trees and they were pretty heavy. I want to get a sense of trees. Yeah, that ground is sure tiled up, huh? I haven't played with the, it's a, uh, what's it called? It's a landscape material. And I don't actually know, I haven't done one in so long, how to adjust the tiling on landscape materials. So that's kind of why I just wish, it's a great material, it's just so, so tiled. So anybody happens to know how to change that, it would be amazing. Let's select it. To go here, maybe? Is there an online packaging solution in Unreal 5? Try to package your windows. Oh, you're asking stuff on, yeah. I'm not super sure about packaging things and sending it and moving it across. I haven't had to do that yet, so that's a good question. But I don't have the answer to that one, sorry. is the material itself. This is one thing that I haven't loved in Unreal is the materials feel a bit odd sometimes. Like just the way to manipulate one thing, like tiling and offset, I guess. 
five, five. That's it. It's working. Point one. Point one. So, there we go. Feeling a little better. Still don't love that one though. I think I need to go back to the landscape material. Like I, I can probably still swap this out, I'd imagine. But then I would need to go in. I think I've just adjusted the actual tiling for said material. I would need to duplicate it, create an instance of it, and just say like this is what it's for. Let's see what this one would look like. I wish the displacement was coming through. That's a real annoyance for me right now. Because this would look so much better being displaced. Use macro texture. I've never used macro texture. this one a little bit more. Let's see what other ones we could try. This is a crayon. This is a riverbed. This is one we're using in there right now. So you can see how terrifying that looks. Let's see some other waters though too. We'll do that in a sec. Swamp water. Ooh. This is much more peaceful. Kind of serene. See, this one needs the displacement, I think, because it's just not working as well. And it doesn't have a displacement. And I'm not sure why the displacement isn't working. Like, I know it's, it's not in the material. That's part of the problem. But it's issues... It's not giving me the option to just select like the different materials. And so I've just been very confused with some of the way that it's working. I've read that and heard that displacement is depreciated. I've heard that it doesn't work. I've heard that it does work. So I haven't been able to figure it out myself yet. I like this one being here for now. Just a bit more peaceful. If I can figure out displacement, this might be the one to go. Way to go. Which will probably require me to download more stuff, but that's okay. This one feels probably the most natural. And I will do a layer blend material, but this for now, just for a setup, feels pretty good.
Sorry, I'm also signing into bridge on my other side to see if I can make this work. So this is the bridge that's not in this. See, when I'm in here, I get download settings of what I'm allowed to pick. Right? This is what I'm confused about. Is why this bridge experience is so vastly different than this bridge experience. They also aren't synced. So we'll have to figure this out. Something I want to figure out is the displacement stuff. Something I want to figure out is, uh, you know, how to get some of this. These things that I'm having trouble with is like tiling materials. Just doing some of the more basic things that I would do really easily in Maya or, or in any other program. Uh, that stuff I'm still kind of bumbling through. So apologies for that. But I think this one is getting there. I don't know if I love the brown though. Just visually. Let's try this last one. I was trying this one. This one might be interesting. That kind of works. So we could do like this one. We could do this one. No. We're going to change that one back to what it was. Oops. Wrong one. Wasn't the one I want. Was it this one? Okay. This is what we were using. I'm not going to use this. I don't like this one. Okay, close that out. I'm just kind of setting things back to their defaults while we're doing this real quick. I'm going to use that basic water. I do like this one though too. From the idea of its standpoint. Still needs to be tiled though, huh? Let's come in here and tile this. More than yeah, there we go. that feels a bit more clear. And then we're gonna do was this one here at was it this one? Nope. Let's turn that off. Let's turn this on. Sorry, I know I'm working on another monitor, so it might be. Confusing to see, but this is kind of the general direction now, I think. Cool. Let's hide all these. It's like an imaginary swamp. Yes, that's kind of the goal. Uh, some of these things are not streaming in their textures. That's okay. We're going to get some of this soon. I want to get some trees now. I'm going to remove this just so you don't have to see it. Uh, if you want to see outliners or anything like that let me know i just assume that seeing the visual itself is more interesting but if you're like no josh please just let me know and i will adjust uh so now we need to get some 
moss and stone stuff going. Get some of this just kind of placing it around for now. I also need to enable virtual textures. I don't have that done. That will help the streaming of the textures. Just going to place those around for now. Uh, it's just you wouldn't put a pile of wood that far away from your thing. We'll toss it over here. Bring this person over here. Just generally. Starting to kind of figure out exactly what this is going to be. Let's just grab all this. Put some set dressing over here. Maybe I'll make like a little work shed for them using some of the same stuff. When did you start working on this file I'm on now? Uh, the actual creation of the file uh, I did last night, but most of the layout and everything of actual what the visuals are uh, is all done today. The character, uh, this character was started, this is where we ended up last stream, the end of last stream. And then uh, over the course of the week, I continued working on it to here. And then we imported all that today to get into Unreal, and we've been working on that pretty much all day. And we have about 20 minutes or so left in the stream. So we're going to keep working a little bit longer. Maybe this should be like behind here. And this could go like here. Let's find, I had one in the content browser, I thought, so I thought, no assets here, okay, I don't believe you, add that, let's add this tree, Let's add these roots. Let's add this tree. Let's add this log. You can't see what I'm doing, but it's over here. I'm adding all these elements that are already downloaded. And then we'll do some quick um, foliage too. Just to explore, see what it could look like. see if any of those have come in. Oh, there's that tree. Let's get this thing. Ah, yes. There we go. This is what we need. We need a couple of these things. Some dead trees. This is probably the one that we'll use for a lot of stuff for the beginning. But even if we just kind of came over here, let's just see what happens. Let's try this as a, a quick test. So I could sit here and I'll do this. I'll show you the examples. I could duplicate this thing around but we're going to deal with them you know where it's the exact same thing over and over and over so what i'm going to do is do a quick test we'll put one over here just for fun cool but then we'll take over here we're going to go to our foliage and we're going to choose our foliage or it looks like i have all this marsh already i can actually grab any foliage type meaning anything this is now the one that i'm selecting it's the only thing that's checked and i think that if i paint We'll get a whole bunch of this tree. So what I need to do is come in here and say I want to adjust the scale. So the minimum one was fine. Let's go big. Let's say five. And let's just paint. That's way denser than I expected it to be. So I need to come in here and say the density. Let's just make it one instead of a hundred. 
right? It is not aligning to the normal. So if something is off normal, you see that it's kind of going off. That's okay. Or it can be if that's what we want. Maybe too much of that one type of tree. But if we were to get other types of these trees or tree stumps or dead trees or there's a whole selection of those, we can make something that feels a bit more interesting visually because there'll be more breakup. So I could do a density of like five. I could do um, random yaw. I want it to align to normal, not average normals. Uh, all these little settings over here. Cast shadow, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Mm hmm Scaling, free, what does free do? Oh, yeah, it just squishes it. No, we want uniform. It should be rotating them and all that stuff. So we'll, we'll do a quick just like brush of what this could be. I don't think that's what the end result will be, but you can, it gives us a much better vibe of what this location is. We'll turn this off. We'll get some of these on. Let's see what this looks like. These are all the same type of uh, marsh. You'll see what it's doing. It's loading in its textures. But we can get some nice little marsh land stuff. I'm going to dial down the density. It's going to be per thing, so it's important to note that. So I think by default it was 100. And the way this is open, I'm going to close that. Our overall brush is going to go here. Do a quick test. Paint density. You can also erase as well. So 0.5. If I want it to be more dense, I need to come in here. Say there's a scale, a max of five. We'll see that some of these are going to be much bigger now and some are going to be much smaller. I don't really want that there, but we could start exploring some of this. We're on the edges of some of this. We're going to get this sort of plant life. So it can be dead and it can be you know, interesting in that way, but we can also add a little bit more variation here with these plants. I'm kind of liking this, actually. This is looking nice. That being said, I do want to undo all of that. Great. Because I need to set these all up. What you'll notice if I click on the next one here, it says a minimum of one, max of five. If I click this, it goes max one. And the density changes again. So I need to come into all every single one of these and change it to a value that I want. If I want them all to be scaled. Otherwise, only that one large plant would be the one that was being scaled up. We wouldn't have the, the natural difference of what we see in this version. So come in and explore this kind of stuff. Can make it a little greener make it feel a little bit more alive as it hits the edge that might be more interesting too especially as we get to some of these other uh types of water I, I like this one for now this is a very simple water but if i did something like this that might make more sense for it or something with it's like more of a grosser swamp water that might change the vibe so i kind of like that too for now we'll keep it the black one and what we could do is we can also erase. And I think it's just right here. So we can come in here and just erase. Let's do a large one. Looks like it's just erasing that. It's because that is checked off. So we'll undo. Check all of these off. Check this on. And now I can erase a path. So I can dial this down. 
I wanted to try to create the illusion that there's some form of a path. We can do something kind of like this. Maybe a little heavy. I'll probably end up deleting most of these other trees just because it's too similar. But we'll have at least a sense of this. And then we can come in with these other ones. Let's turn this off. And let's just turn on all this grass. We're going to paint. Grass, grass, grass. All right. And this will give us all this kind of stuff on the ground. So same kind of thing. We would want to go in and adjust the density of each of these. But this will give us, we'll change our size a little smaller. This really nice bits of grass and just kind of extra wildlife that will exist in this area. Do need to go in and adjust the scale of all of them so they can be bigger and smaller and, and or the density of them so it can be more dense in areas. But it's kind of nice to be able to grab this foliage stuff and just quickly add this to the scene. So we'll be doing this a lot more in future streams. We only have about 10 minutes to go. My goal is to probably wrap this up in two streams we'll see if i can do that but the goal is to do it in two streams so um i think with what we've got started i think it's achievable it'll still be a lot of work and there's a lot here that needs to be adjusted but let's go in and, and just play around with some lighting now uh, and let's also create a camera so create a cinematic camera we'll call this in our outliner uh rename call it shot cam uh, we'll call it shot cam one I'm sure I'll do more than one I'm gonna go into my details of the shot cam that's right here and I can adjust what type of camera it is is it did 16 by 9 digital film is what kind of film is it uh, what kind of lens is it I prefer to use these primes I kind of have been enjoying that and then what I can do is go from the perspective view and I can just select that. And so now we're actually looking through this camera. It does have a sort of a different sense. And as you can see, it also has a blur camera, camera blur. What is the right word I'm saying? Not camera blur. Um, lens, depth blur, depth of field. That's the right word. Let's do like a super eight. You can see all these different automatic settings that it will create IMAX film. 16 by 9. Uh, I tend to like ones that are a bit more uh, widescreen, but I might do something more square here. We'll see. More 16 by 9. So you can see all this stuff in this division. These are just basics, and it's still using uh, the same prime lens. So here's a 12 prime, a 30 prime. 200 prime you can see how you could manipulate it and look through it and be able to figure out what you're actually looking for uh, that's a very hard to navigate lens you could create a zoom lens where you can zoom in here and zoom out right so we can play around with this i'm probably going to start with a 50 or an 80 or a 30 and start looking for shots so basically uh, as I start to get things set up, I'm going to start looking for where the character is, where the environment is, what I want to be looking at, right? Uh, I can come in here and adjust my focus uh, settings, all this kind of stuff we can play around with. And we'll play around with this quite a bit more in future streams as we start figuring out what the character is going to look like. Uh, this is like 30 different pieces, so trying to select it all this quick may be a huge mistake. We lose anything but even just like rotating the character starting to understand where they might be coming in here and saying you know landscape that's my foliage select like individuals that one's in the way 
I don't like how this one is doing. Again, I'm going to delete all these in the future, but... Starting to frame up the scene is something that's going to be a next big step for me. Uh, because as we get into this, right, this is really where we're going to see what the final shots are and what it could be. Maybe even like having another element here. For example, we could take we could take this and push it way over here and use this as our foreground. Probably just delete this. But we can have this. Let's say we've moved it. It looks like it has some plants on it. To just select one, not oh, sculpt one. Goodbye plant, goodbye plant, goodbye plant. So we could try something where we're getting this in frame. in my, my content browser at the moment. I thought I exported this axe. Here we go. far off the ground, further off the ground than I knew. There we go, we're just inside the ground. So we can start exploring this stuff, which is my favorite part of this process of figuring out exactly what the world is, what the scene is, uh, what's happening here, who this person is. Maybe we bring this and this over. talking to them. They seem a little close here. Let's get something in where it's going to start having some elements. And then let's quickly, just very fast, play with the time of day. I don't think this will be the final, obviously, but it might be a good start for us. Let's go this way. Something like this maybe, and then we'll play around very quickly with the time of day before we head out. So the outline of the sky. Kind of enjoying something maybe like this. But we'll have to figure it out as we continue. Uh, anyways, everybody, that's actually going to be it for our stream today. Uh, wrapping up right now. Thank you so much for joining today. Uh, if you're enjoying what you're watching, like, follow, subscribe, ring the bells, all that stuff so you get our notifications of what we're doing. Um, and we have a ton of other features and streams and things that we'll be doing, whether it's events on Thursday nights or Thursday afternoons, which we're making of. Uh, this stream, which is every Wednesday, Creature Corner, which was Tuesday nights. Uh, we have Voice in the Hollow, which is a stream on Friday. So check that one out where uh, Tran and Miguel are making a 
uh, short film in Unreal 5 uh, from scratch. So if you like watching that, check that one out too. Uh, so thank you everybody so much for being here today. Super appreciate it again. And we will see you all very soon. Thanks everybody. See you next week.